Hello and welcome to the India Today Business Today Post Budget Roundtable. One of the big challenges in the new emerging world order are the deepening fissures between the Western liberal society and the China Russia bloc when it comes to technology. And in these very choppy tech waters, what's the course that India must take to be able to put national interest first? The man entrusted with that very critical mission which will in many ways determine the future of our country is the Union Minister for Electronics, Information Technology, Communications and Railways, Minister Ashwani Vaishnav. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us and it's fantastic to have you with us. I want to start by asking you about your big semiconductor mission, which is really the sinecure of all eyes. Begin by giving us a status update on where are we now. We've been hearing for a long time Badi announcement hone wali hai, kuch din ruk jao. It's been many weeks and months since we're still waiting for that big announcement. So, where are we at this moment, and how soon do you see India becoming a manufacturing hub for semiconductors? Welcome, sir. Thank you, Rahul. Semiconductor is one subject which is very, very important for the country's future. See, today, um, electronics manufacturing, which was practically negligible 10 years back, is close to $87 billion electronics manufacturing is happening in the country. iPhone is manufactured in the country. And the recent budget, whatever uh, reliefs has been given on the BCD for some components, that is going to further increase the growth of uh, mobile phones manufacturing in the country. We are almost reaching $9 billion exports of mobile phones this year. To cater to the most important raw material semiconductor, a semiconductor policy was announced in, on the 1st of January of 2022. And if you recall, in each of my statements, I had said in 14 to 16 months, we'll have the decision in place. 14 to 16 months starts from 1st of March. Just wait for that much time. What I can tell you is, as an update, there is very strong, very positive reaction, very positive approach by semiconductor majors for India. And that's because of three things. First, we have very good talent base here. Second, the entire ecosystem which is required for semiconductor, the government has contacted each and every of those ecosystem participants. They are willing to come here. They have committed to come here. Third, a very good long-term plan which is there for 10 years. Our plan is for 10 years, right? So this kind of talent base, this kind of ecosystem, this kind of commitment for a long term, which is what is very unique to, to the country. And we, uh, we should be seeing some real majors coming to India in the coming months. So while we still wait for this uh, idea to translate into reality, you would have seen very high profile criticism from the likes of Raghuram Rajan and many others uh, about the semiconductor policy. I interviewed him at the World Economic Forum in Davos and I quote certain aspects of his philosophical arguments and get you to respond to it. The first is that you got a $10 billion PLI scheme uh, in trying to make India a semiconductor manufacturing hub. 50% uh, of the project costs for domestic production will be taken care of by the government. One of the concerns your critics have is what's the guarantee that once the PLI incentives are done away with, that these manufacturers will actually stay PLI disguises uncompetitiveness of manufacturing and there is a possibility that a hub like Vietnam may be able to attract some of these players once our government's incentives end. So let's start by getting you to respond to that. Mr. Raghuram Rajan is a very well-known economist. I respect him a lot. When people marry electronics, uh, uh, economics with politics, their views change. Before 2014, Mr. Raghuram Rajan was always going for increasing credit, increasing credit, increasing credit. After May, th May 2014, as the, as the RBI governor, he changed his, totally, totally he changed his stance. He said, no, tighten, 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 tighten. The person who says that we should not be promoting manufacturing in this country, would you take his argument seriously? Had he been a neutral, a professional economist, I would like to get, a, get on a debate with him. But today, he is colored by his affiliation for a particular political party. Rather than giving a professional economic rationale, 
he is giving politically colored arguments. It's interesting to see the minister's response because my impression of Minister Vaishnav so far has been a technocrat. I've seen you now punching back as a politician, which is good. Now, the other criticism that I've heard, and I'm keen on getting you to respond to it, is the technology of the semiconductors which will be manufactured in India. Now, from what we've heard from Vedanta Foxconn, initially they'll produce uh, semiconductors which are 28 nanometers. Now, it's being said that already the world is at 5 nanometers and by the time this manufacturing facility becomes live, uh, 3 nm uh, uh, semiconductor chips could be in production. So the concern is that we're actually spending a lot of money or giving a lot of incentive for technology which will be dated by the time it gets started. This is a totally, totally misplaced concern. If you look at the way semiconductor industry is evolving, and this is a development of last four or five years, right? Today, almost 50, 52 percent of the total semiconductor market is in three sectors. What are those three sectors? First is electric vehicles, second is telecom equipment, third is power electronics. These are the three sectors in which semiconductors are having more than 50 percent of the demand today. And what are these sectors requiring? These sectors require higher voltage because they have to carry more current. So they have to, these are basically applications which are called high power applications, right? All these applications require semiconductors in the range of 35, 45, 60, those nanometers. So the entire world today is actually rebalancing their semiconductor manufacturing and getting more and more towards the higher nodes because that is where the demand is. If you look at the US Chips Act, they have kept a special provision for the higher nodes because everybody can see the future, the telecom, telecom revolution of 5G. It's a huge demand base, electro, uh, uh, electrical vehicle base, electrical vehicle demand. These are huge demand bases for semiconductor and all these will be in the higher nodes.